If you follow my channel, then you'll already know, but if you don't, let me tell you, recently I just got my first ever Mac computer, a MacBook Pro 14 inch, doesn't matter which one, and I've used Windows all my life, so there was a bit of a transition there, a lot of stuff you can do on Windows that you can't do on Mac, and it gets a bit confusing. Luckily, if you're having trouble using the Mac in the way that you want to, or the way that you are used to, you don't have to worry, because in true Apple fashion, there's an app for that. And given that you've just probably spent more than enough money on the Mac itself, we're talking thousands of pounds for these devices sometimes, right? I decided I would pick out five apps that are completely free that can help you get some features from Windows back onto your Mac and just make that switch a little bit more seamless and a little bit easier for you. So the first app we're gonna talk about is Rectangle. Well known, very much heard about throughout the Mac ecosystem and it allows you to snap windows. So you know when you're on Windows and you drag a window to the top of the screen or to the left of the screen, it will snap to fill half of the screen or it will snap to fill the full screen. Mac doesn't let you do that. Now it does have a weird integrated feature where if you hold the little green maximize button, it will give you an option to go left or right. It doesn't quite work the same way as Windows. It then asks you what you want to snap to the right hand side or the, the opposite side and it takes over the whole screen, you lose your menu bar, you get lost and you can't figure out how to get back to where you were when you started. So enter Rectangle, a free app. There is a paid for version, but I've got by just fine so far without using the paid for version. And it essentially gives you the exact same window snapping feature on your Mac, as well as a bunch of other options. It gives you even more options to choose from really than even the Windows snapping does. And it will also give you a whole bunch of settings and shortcuts and things that you can set up to be able to use the keyboard to be able to snap windows to different areas, move them around, put them into corners, do whatever you want to do. Really simple, really straightforward, runs in the background, never have to think about it again. And you'll be snapping windows left and right and up and down and wherever you want to go, really. It feels just like windows pretty much. The second free app we want to talk about today is called Mac Mouse Fix. And essentially, if you use a mouse rather than a trackpad with your Mac, if you've used Windows for a while, it just feels weird. There's weird acceleration, it feels odd, the scrolling especially feels really slow and clunky. And Mac Mouse Fix is a really simple, small app that you can download, install, have it running in the background, and it will fix all of those problems for you. You can increase the speed that it scrolls, you can make various adjustments to the scrolling settings, you can also set up the buttons on your mouse. So if you have like back and forward buttons, it makes it easy to use them. You can even use the buttons on the side of your mouse to control gestures. So for me, for example, the back button on my mouse, if I hold the back button and move the mouse upwards, it opens up mission control. So it gives you some of those trackpad gestures back when you're using a mouse as well, which is really cool to have. And finally, for me, the option that it enabled that I was looking for and where, what really brought me to this app was scrolling the natural scrolling option where it's reversed, when you're using the trackpad on the MacBook, it feels great, it feels natural. It's like you're using your phone and swiping on a touch screen, right? It feels great. However, when you use an actual mouse, the scrolling is backwards. You wanna scroll down and the page to go down and scroll up for it to go up, and it doesn't work like that, right? So you can go into the Mac settings and disable natural scrolling, which is what they call that feature, to make it go the right way but it will also disable it for your trackpad. So if you're using a MacBook and you're switching between the trackpad and the mouse, like I am, you're constantly going in and swapping that setting to make it feel right. Now with Mac Mouse Fix, you'll be able to just change the setting on the mouse. So when you're using a mouse, you can scroll normally, scroll down to scroll down, scroll up to scroll up. However, when you switch back to your MacBook and you unplug it and take it somewhere, the natural scrolling on the touchpad will still work and it just feels it just feels right to me to do it that way. So Mac Mouse Fix, super easy to use app. Doesn't do a whole lot, but what it does do makes an absolutely massive difference day to day when you're using the computer. The third app is an app called Swift Quit. It's a little bit difficult to say, but essentially it makes the red X button on Mac work like it does on Windows. So on Windows, when you click the X in the top right hand corner of a window, if there's no more windows of that application open, it will quit the app and the app won't be running anymore. That feels right, it's normal if you're a Windows user, right? However, the first thing you'll notice in Mac is when you click the little red X, which is in the top left corner, that takes some getting used to too, right? But it doesn't actually close the app, it just hides the window and the app can still be running in the background even if there's no windows open. And it's really confusing. 
it takes a lot of getting used to to do it like that. However, Swift Quit will allow you to make it work the same way that Windows works. So when you close the final window of a specific application with the X button, it will quit the app for you. Job done. The fourth app I want to bring to you is called Alt Tab. It does what the name suggests, right? In Mac OS, you do have the Command Tab option and you also have the Command Tilde option to switch between windows of a specific application. However, the Command Tab doesn't really give you a lot of information. It only lets you choose between active windows, like windows that are open that haven't been hidden, which Swift Quit will help you solve that problem if you're getting into a model with that. But often I've got windows that are hidden, but I can't access them with Command Tab. It gets a bit frustrating. You have to kind of adjust your workflow to make it work right. And also, it doesn't actually show you a preview of the window, right? It just shows you the actual app icon that you're switching between. So Alt Tab app allows you to actually set a keyboard shortcut to be able to switch through using its own version of that rather than the Mac OS version, which actually you can set to use the same as Windows. It will give you a preview of the window. You can see a little preview of the actual what's on the display at the time for that app. By default, the command it gives you is option and tab, so your command tab is still working. However, obviously you could disable command tab from being the Mac OS one and just switch completely to that one if you wanted to and use alt tab as command tab and it will work much like Windows and make your life a whole lot easier when you're switching through apps so you don't get lost, you don't lose which window is what and you kind of get all confused and you think this is just silliness on Mac OS, why is it so hard? but doesn't have to be, Alt Tab will fix it for you. The fifth and final app that I wanna talk about is called Cheat Sheet. It's not exactly an app that brings a feature from Windows into Mac OS, which most of the other ones on this list are. However, it is an app that I think will help you massively in switching from Windows to Mac. Essentially what Cheat Sheet does is it just allows you to see all of the keyboard shortcuts for any application that you're currently using by just holding the command button down. When you do that, a screen will pop up and it will list every available option for a keyboard shortcut that's available to you at that time in that app. And you can either then go and click on the specific one you wanna use and it will execute that command, or you can just look to see what the shortcut is and then press it on the keyboard and execute that shortcut that way. So there's a lot of shortcuts in Mac OS and it seems to be really worth learning how to use them and what they all are. I'm trying my best to learn as many as possible and I'm starting to become much more adept in using it as well now. Some are obvious like Command T opens a new tab, whereas, you know, uh, Control T would do that in Windows. That makes sense, it's the same. However, in Safari, for example, if you want to refresh a page, you'd be used to pressing F5 on Windows, but it doesn't do anything. In Mac OS, in Safari, to refresh a page, you actually press Command and R. It makes sense, right? R, refresh. Perfect sense, but if you don't know that that's what the shortcut is, you're just gonna get lost. So holding down Command, open up the cheat sheet, and you'll be able to see straight away what command you're missing, which one it is, and execute it however you wish. And it might even help you learn some shortcuts that are also in Windows that you didn't even know existed, right? So there's the five apps, but don't go away yet. Wait a second. There's just one more little piece of parting wisdom that I want to leave you with regarding all these apps that replicate Windows functions. So what I've learned in my brief time using Mac OS is that it is different. It's not Windows. And although there's apps to bring all these features across to Mac OS, some of them are great. Rectangle, for example, I think is brilliant. Definitely use it. I think a lot of Mac users would probably use it if they've never used Windows before, right? It's a great feature. However, don't try and make Mac OS be Windows because it's not, it's different. Try your best to learn Mac OS for what it is. Start to use some of the features, like the full screen feature, for example, is something that I thought was ridiculous when I first started using it. However, when I've been editing videos, having one virtual desktop with full screen DaVinci Resolve and being able to swipe back to a desktop either using a mouse shortcut with Mac Mouse Fix or by using the trackpad, if I'm using the trackpad, I can swipe back to my desktop, get all of, have a load of files or different things, websites open on that desktop. That can be all cluttered and then I can easily swipe back to Resolve, carry on editing. If I need to grab something, I swipe across, grab it, swipe back. It, is actually a really nice workflow to use. And the same goes for a lot of these things that Mac doesn't do, 
that Windows does. It's not meant to do it. Now, there are things that are just silly. Why, why isn't that a feature? Why can't I see my file transfer speed, for example? Things that are frustrating, but don't try and force it. If you're gonna actually wanna use a Mac, use it like a Mac. It's frustrating at first, but I promise you, just try, bear with it, stick with it, keep trying, and over time, as you learn more and more shortcuts, and you learn more of the gestures, and you figure out there's different ways to do things, it will actually start to all make sense. And having done that for a couple of weeks now, and I've forced myself to just use the Mac and just try and learn how it works, it's become so much more easier and it all kind of makes sense. And I'm, I'm not really, apart from playing games, I'm not missing the Windows PC at all. So I hope that helps some of you guys. Stay tuned to the channel for more Mac and PC and all kinds of tech related content. We're not biased here, right? We'll do anything. And please, if there's any other apps that you can think of that you think might help me or help other people watching this video to make that switch from Windows to Mac, do drop it in the comments. It would be much appreciated and I'll definitely give them a try. Thank you for watching people. I'll see you really soon, but until next time, stay batting proof. I'm out.